Your lashes, like I'm about to fly away, y'all. <laughs> All right, waiting for some people to get on. And we are back. All right. So, I'm going to recap a little bit before I continue to go further. Um, and then once again, please share this with your friends who may be on right now. Anyone you think you could, could benefit from the information, you know, this is not really, well, people are still getting acclimated to this knowledge. So, I'm just here to assist with the facilitation. Hello. So, Ashe and Amen, right? Ashe giving power to a certain energy vibration that we feel inside. Amen is like, well, hey, it is what it is. Like, you know what? Oh, you're giving me apples? You know what? Amen. It is what it is. I'll take it, like, gratefulness, right? So, that's the difference. Ashe, Amen. And they're totally different. They're totally different. <laughs> okay. So, I was on page... Oh, yes. Sacred men. Here we go. Number two. Oh, yes. That's what it was. Reclaim your ancestral heritage. Study your history, um, particularly the Nubian legacy of Osar and Haru. Identify your purpose for being. Boom. Number three. Start really talking with your mate. We've overdone the strong, silent type thing. The human ear is a feminine instrument. Harsh words and coarse speech are a no-no. Never, never even think of striking your woman. Walk away if necessary. Number four. And please, I'm going to save this live, but at the moment, please share with your friends, with your loved ones. Uh, okay, number four. Dress and adorn yourself with the grace and dignity of designs based upon African culture. Stop being clones of European men. Remember, the suit and tie may be the perfect infiltration garments for moving up in the world of corporate sharks. But on your time off, don the elegant, kingly robes of your African culture. Bring color to your community. Bring color to your community. That's why I wear colors a lot. Because I totally believe in being a light in many ways. Bring color to your community, brothers. Our children need color. Enough of that blue dream, blue jean drabness. None of that, none of, we're done with that New York all black and gray stuff, right? Okay. Five. There's a couple. There's actually like twelve steps, but um, you know, I think I think I do want to get uh guide you through this. Practice sexual hygiene to the max. Funk is good in music, but sexual funk is a turn off. <laughs> Remember, a sacred man does not eat dead flesh. It is these foods that cause unpleasant odors in the private parts of men and women. Your women's area down there is the entrance of the Holy of Holies. Enter this gateway to paradise with a clean mind, heart, and organ. Share this with your friends, if they have wives, if they have girlfriends, if they're young men who um, are pu prepubescent or pubescent young women. You know, we didn't get this growing up. We didn't get the African rites of passage. So it's important that we hand the knowledge that we do know down. So. Please, please, please share. And a lot of young people, I'm coming to see even more that they're lonely, they're depressed, they're looking for partnerships, looking for friendships, communities. So please share this information because not only will this heal um, the hygiene, you know, and the, and the health, it'll also heal the mind. It'll heal the mind. As I stated before, comedic philosophy is about giving life. The foods give life. The sun gives life. So, let's continue. We're helping the sacred man tonight. Please, please, please share this with, the, with at least five of your friends. Um, men, women, young women, young men. Anyone that you think could benefit from this information here. Um, yes, yes, yes. Number six. Queen of Fool. We're back on it again, sacred men. Exercise. Do your crunches. A pot belly has no place on the body of a sacred man. <laughs> a pot belly is a storehouse of pollution and putrefaction. It will ruin your prostate gland and contribute to toxic sperm. Now he mentioned something about the prostate gland. Now there's 
there's a silent killer that are killing our black aboriginal moorish asiatic men okay prostate cancer is also killing our men now it's interesting that a, a solution is yes eating the right foods exercising as we've heard here but also a pinky a day keep the prostate away i'm just saying <laughs> okay and if you have a mate that is like the safest you know the safest uh physician if you will that's communication because as as your as your sacred woman as your as your woman she wants to protect you she wants to preserve your life okay and it's interesting when i hear conversations about that about men being you know i hate to say it prideful ego um and not feeling comfortable with getting their prostate checked to prevent cancer that is what why they that is why people do this at least in this book is to prevent prostate cancer because when that that gland swells like a melon that's an issue and it becomes painful it's a t- it becomes it's a tumor it becomes a tumor so as your sacred woman we do not want you to be in pain we want to prolong your life and we don't like doctors you don't like doctors we get it we know what it is so why not allow your sacred woman to help you help you that is self-love brothers self-love receiving love is also an act of self-love, giving love, right? In that vulnerable space. But that's a conversation for another day. Please share this with my friends. <laughs> There's more information to come. Please, please, please stay tuned for more information. So I'm going to go through number seven. Set up your own altar of sacredness. Of sacredness, okay? Um, place upon it your sacred woman's picture and those of your children. Speak to them from your heart and spirit. Trust the ears of the invisible. Don't fail to invoke the feminine aspect of the divine. Um, African culture teaches us of a mother, father, creator. Number eight. Treat each of the children of your union with the same respect and love. Our relationships are being torn apart by men who molest their daughters and stepdaughters. This is a sure way to ruin a woman for life. She will carry the scars into adult life and it will affect the way she deals with her future husband. Don't contribute to this tragic and vicious cycle. So sad. So real. So this is why, even also talking to myself, we have to love one another. Love ourselves, yes, but even when it's hard and challenging, you know, we have to love one another. You know, and there's a scripture that says that. By doing so... I will know that you are my disciples by you loving one another. And one of the sermons by my, um, one of our evangelists, Nick Infantino, he had a sermon on loving when it's especially difficult. Loving when it's especially difficult. And he stated that when we show people grace and mercy and, and compassion, that when we are, when we fall short, grace, mercy, compassion is also extended in return so look at that reciprocity look at that reciprocity right that's also a comedic philosophy all right put a number one if you felt that number one if you felt that and put a heart if you're feeling healing you're feeling some healing energy feeling vibrations that of love and just truth right so number nine nine out of twelve number nine Establish your mentors. Sit with the elder, sit with the elder men. Learn from their wisdom, and from their errors, do pass on to them in a respectful way the lessons you've learned in sacredness. Heal the relationship with your own mother. Remember your mother's and her mother's birthdays. Okay, that's important. You now speak for myself. I have a twin brother, and. Our relationship with our mother wasn't always where it is now. You know, it's better. Um, But remembering your mother's, right? Your mother and your mother's birthday. Just to honor them. You know, even the Bible, if you're into the Bible, says honor your mother and father. And one simple way to honor our mother is recognizing her birthday. Shouting her out. Showing her love on her day. Um, Yes, yes, yes. Totally agree. 
um, establish a mentor, sit with an el- with the elder men, learn from their wisdom. They seek wisdom, seek wisdom, seek wisdom. All right. I'm 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 gonna start chewing the two of y'all out. I'm gonna start chewing y'all out because I don't I don't I don't know if you really if you are sending to your friends if you are sending to your friends don't be selfish with the love y'all don't be selfish with the information y'all <laughs> you know the only way we can receive is if we unclench with our tight fists and I'm talking to myself too but you have to unclench our tight fists and be willing to give right. And receive, give and receive, give knowledge, receive knowledge, give love, receive love. It's part of the universal reciprocity. So please share this video. And even after it's saved, share the video again. Tag some friends, at some of your friends under the video. We are going to be coming into a whole new era of black power. Mm. Okay, let's see. Number 10 out of 12. Discover nurture and relate to the woman within you this is for the men okay relate to the woman in you i appreciate you thank you i appreciate you that's it i appreciate you thank you so discover nurture and relate to the woman within you Mm, that's deep right until you do this you will never be able to nurture and relate to the woman outside you who is your mate. Keep a journal and by and try dialoguing with your inner feminine energy. Feel her in action when you bring your mate gifts and flowers and when you touch your mate's hair as you pass her chair. Little things mean a lot. Number 11. Most of all, trust your sacred woman. She is the most trustworthy of all women because she cannot just be laid. She does not sleep around. No man can touch her unless he is cleansed. So there is no need to be afraid or jealous if she is friendly with other men in her life. She does not mix essences. Because she is a natural live food lifestyle, she is not hot all the time. A sacred woman will help you to save your seed. She is not oversexed because she has restored her natural balance. Match her as you support your dual resurrection as a couple of pure light and healing. Look at that. Resurrection of pure light and healing. If that's not security, I don't know what is. What are your thoughts on what's going on so far? Are y'all, uh, y'all liking this? Y'all up? Y'all up? You liking information right here? <laughs> what y'all think about this information here? Is it helpful? Is it helpful? Right? Is it help, helping my men out here? <laughs> I hope it's helping my brothers out. I am here to serve. Okay. And here's the last one. Number 12. When your Macy's fit to accept her natural hair and stop using the hot comb and chemicals that have been killing her hair don't be turned off let's end this schizoid behavior rejoice for you no longer have split loyalties she has taken back her natural crown give thanks and praise beautiful oh look at that look at that let me see. Okay, now this is, um, it says Speech of the Seed by Haru Ankara Samaj. Okay, okay, okay. I'd like to, s- I'm not sure if that's the same person as Baba Pata. I think is he, he goes by, diff- I think that's his other name. Please do your research, but I believe that's the same person. Um, Baba Haru, but yeah, Baba Haru, and Haru Ank Rasamat. I believe they're the same person, but it looks like there's a poem here. I'm gonna read it for you. So much knowledge. Okay, get so much knowledge. Sure, just make sure um you tag my my YouTube page at you know at Ms Dynasty M I Z Dynasty. Make sure you at me on YouTube and. At me on my Instagram so they know where to find me. That's it, you know? And you can put it on my website. 
if you feel so kind. <laughs> so I have a newsletter coming up and I would love to just share more information with anybody who's looking for it, you know, who needs that community. It's so crazy, you know, sad how we don't have these safe spaces. Um, I forgot this phone's like this. Yeah, we don't have these safe spaces to our our at our access, you know, if that makes sense. So we have to, we, I have to, so, I had to seek out these places to find sacred places and to find people that I felt would understand me more to get the healing that I needed, especially when I was dealing with a lot of trauma with um, my mother and being abused at home, dealing with drug abuse, you know, just different things. I was looking for healing in all these circles. And it gave me little aspects of it. So, you know, I'm, I'm here to just share the information, share the resources with people who are trying to find a way out of no way. And there's a lot of young people out there. And, and it's over alarming. How many young people are seeking that? They're seeking a way out spiritually. So we are here to be that for them. And I totally butchered that site. I'm sorry, y'all. I could not, I couldn't see the, the keyboard as I was texting. This phone is funny. Um, but yes. It's MsDynastyOfficial.com. MsDynastyOfficial.com. You can sign up for uh, newsletters. You can book me for speaking engagements, um, for healing sessions as well, energy healing. Um, yes, 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 yes. I have a couple of things in the works, but we can speak on that later. Um, but I would like to read this. I think it's a poem. Let's see. To the Struggling. And this is still for the men. B-boys rhyming, inner city rap. Curse not our woman. Their wombs don't attack. They're our sisters, our mothers, not bitches, not hoes. In their precious bodies, our nation grows. They are the queens of Nubian resurrection. So check this out, a new direction. Respect your first home, the womb of your mama. Bring women, no insults, no curses, no trauma, no acid sperm, no seed hooked on crack, no 40 ounce highs, no dead foods, no violence, no anger, no pain. The ancients are watching as our lives we reclaim. There's two more poems I'm gonna share with you all. Two more poems, family, two more poems. I'm glad this is helpful. Awesome. All right. To the sisters. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> oh, how you dance, womb. You dance, I salute you. Let us celebrate the joy of a freedom reclaimed. You, womb, first nest of the egg of creation, comedic, black, source of all human life. You, womb, store my seed. Oh. Stir my seed to dance with your egg in your primordial waters of noon. Oh, how you dance, womb, with living seed. One more poem, one more, one more. To the brothers, man, man your life stations. Let us cleanse our seed. No negative thoughts, no toxic foods, no adverse actions. Dance seed, dance in the living womb. The king of seeds we sow can make, oh, the, the kind of seeds we sow can make or break our rising nation. No seed comes forth unless it lifts our station and brings glory and healing to all of our relations. Speak seed, speak. Deliver to us the savior of our race or the saviors of our race. Living seeds need living food, herbs, to make sperm seed stern and strong in the womb of heaven where we dance, living seed in a living womb. This is the new order. This is the new day. Be cleansed, be purified. It is the only way. Let's dance. Let's celebrate. And that's where I'm going to stop with the sacred men portion. They also have some yoga postures that I um ha I adapt some of these postures in my own practice here. Here we go. Here we go. 
some of these practices are really good for women who um um basically have you know with child in a womb so this is help, helping some of the women in the postures here yep 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 and these postures and there's some dances too that help the hips to be more um i guess i don't know not flexible but to be more what's the word like fluid you know so when the child is ready to come out into the world it's less traumatic for the mother and for the child so it's, it opens the hips hip bones that's what it is so um i learned that ah oh, what's that school called in brooklyn there was a comedic school in brooklyn i went to and i would go there a few times and there was a woman's circle healing circle we had dance and we have hip movements and it was um one woman she he tested her test testimony was that these dances really helped her with her child giving giving birth to her children she had quite a few so she said it got easier over time so that's awesome so and these and what i can appreciate about kemet and the kemetic yoga uh teaching that i've learned and even in this book it says it where they are moving meditations moving meditations in the western world the world that we know is usually meditation on one spectrum yoga on the other rarely is intentionally combined into one yoga being a moving meditation and that's why i chose the smite yoga system okay <laughs> to be a moving meditation um yes 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 i'm still trying to figure out a way to bring you all comedic yoga um you know pre-recorded at your at your fingertips at your access um, there are some of my lives, if you look at my IGTV, there are some lives where I teach yoga. Or you may catch me on a live teaching you yoga. You gotta look out for it. I will do little mini sessions of it. Yep, here's a posture that I also do. That queen of, that one of uh, her students are doing here. This one I love. Please take a good look at this posture here. Take a good look. This posture here. Hello. Okay, so if you all have ever seen a bottle that has like sediments, like at the base of the bottle, just like things like at the base of it, our body is the same way. So our body, if we don't invert it, like how she's doing here, it'll, it'll cause um, physical and health complications. So yes, that's why it's important to detoxify the sediments at our feet and to have it come back up to the heart, to the heart, where the heart regulates it, cleans it, and pumps it back out to the body, clean, fresh blood. It's good to do that every so often. Like personally, I've been having some issues. I've been feeling some stuff in my feet. And so like sharp pains when I go to sleep, right? So I said, you know what? I know what to do. I'm gonna do this yoga posture, and this is gonna help me, uh, help, help me to get it back to my heart to clean it. So that is a great yoga posture to um, adopt so I did want to go into some other things um, it's getting a little late I don't want to keep you on too long family but yeah there are some awesome yoga postures here um, let's talk about quickly some of the gateways now whew, I don't know I'll be a little <clears throat> I'll be a little conflicted with the gateway because has the altar and it seems like they want people to have all this stuff before they can have uh, start the process, and it just seems like overwhelming and like a financial, <clears throat> a financial investment. Well, it can feel like a lot to get started, but when I spoke to Baba Heru himself, he said the best altar you could have is your bodily altar. I was like, ooh, I shared of that. Amen. I like that because um, it's true. Our 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 body is how. People, we present ourselves in the world. That is our first altar, he mentioned. And I was like, wow, I never thought about that. Because I had mentioned that was a struggle for me. I, that I have the space to have an altar or the finances to invest in all this stuff and really to commit. So that was encouraging advice. All right. So let's see. There's a couple of gateways. Is there a gateway? One, two, three. Let's go to the first gateway. First, let's do it this way. Gateway one through nine. Here's the overview. Let me fix this a little. A little more straight. That works. Okay. So 
gateway number one is words. Gateway number two, oh, gateway number one, sacred words. Gateway two, sacred foods. Gateway three, sacred movement. Gateway four, sacred beauty. Gateway five, sacred space. Gateway six, sacred healing. Gateway seven, sacred relationships. Um, and that's where you can find Baba Heru's piece there. Gateway 8, Sacred Union. Gateway 9, Nefer Atum, the Sacred Lotus Initiation. That That is the nine gateways. So the first one is Sacred Words. And I've never really gone past Gateway 3, some of 4. I've lived and dabbled in a few of these, but um, I've gone up to 4. Words, foods, movement, beauty. It's truly a lifestyle, y'all. Um, but yes, and and even with like what they're saying here, a lot of these things are in the Bible too, as far as the words. Um, yeah, what's what does it say? I'm sorry, I'm thinking about multiple things at one time. Letting no unwholesome speech come from out of our tongues, things like that. Um, you know, bearing. Uh, with one another in love, being patient, love is kind. So just speaking with the heart of love. Um, that's words, healing sacred words. Um, 141. Ah, here we go. Sacred words. And there's an altar and picture of yourself and your ancestors and guardians and elders. And oof, Lord child. Oh no. Oh no. I think my Jesus is quite enough, but uh, I might call an ancestor there, here or there, but um, um, everybody's different. You know, you can mix and match this as your spirit calls to be. So they have the spiritual bath. They have the altar. They have the opening to uh, initiate the spiritual gateway and the guardian who will meet, who will meet you at the gateway. Um, and they want you to, it says, you may use whatever words pour from your heart to open the gateway to speaking to your to your guides um okay so offer your prayer and, and there's music shaking um shaking an instrument ringing a bell beating on a drum rattling an instrument a sacred instrument and this is actually this is actually our ancient ways to let ancient native americans uh, tribes in africa they still do this to this day so i see the importance of it and I see how, like, religion um, has us fear certain things, you know? It's like taking things with a grain of salt, you know, and discerning for your own spirit what's necessary. So, I'm going to skip down to a sacred woman spirit prayer. One I love saying is, Nuk pu netir hamet. Nuk pu netir hamet. Nuk pu netir hamet. That means, I am a sacred woman. I am a sacred woman. So, I would like to leave it here because it's getting late. This is getting long-winded. <laughs> and I want to have more to continue for next time. So, I'm going to end it here. And I'll briefly go over the other books. Hopefully, we can finish that next time. But, the Sacred Woman Spirit Prayer. Sacred Woman is in, oh, Sacred Woman in the Making. Sacred Woman Reawaken. Sacred spirit, hold me near. Protect me from all harm and fear. Beneath the stones of life. Direct my steps into right, into, mm, direct my steps in the right way as I journey through the vision. Sacred spirit, surround me in your most absolute perfect light. Anoint me in your sacred purity, peace, and divine insight. Bless me, truly bless me, as I share this sacred life. Teach me, sacred spirit, to be in tune with the universe. Teach me how to heal with the inner and outer elements of air, fire, water, and earth. So this is to connect the woman to her own um, divinity, if you will. Once again, this is the book, Queen of Bua, Sacred Woman. Check that out. other two books that I want to share and I might add this to the giveaway because I have two of these books um, the seven habits of highly effective teens boom I definitely um, love this book it was gifted to me kind of twice actually interesting gifted to me twice um, and I like this book because it's also a healing book for adults as well 
So it has a tree here. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is incredible. This is a book about forming habits, better habits, new habits um, to win in life, right? So here's a tree. Habit one through seven. Habit one is at the bottom and habit seven at the top, like a tree. Now, I don't know if you want to, I don't know if you can see that, but you can kind of screenshot it. It's totally cool. I'll leave it right there for a moment. But yeah, these are all habits of highly effective teenagers, you know? Um, so like, for example, be proactive is number one. Number two, begin with the end in mind. Number three, put first things first. Your cleanliness, um, your organizing your space, um, you know, say hi to your family, checking in with your family, your loved ones, things like that. Praying, you know, that kind of thing, you know, for whatever's first to you to get your foundation for the day. Look at that. The grass, the roots, foundation, hello. Your foundation, look at that. That's deep right there, right? And then it goes out into the, the um, trunk. Think win-win. Or I like to say the quote, I never lose, I always win, I never lose, right? How can you lose that kind of thinking? I, I never lose, I always win. Think like, think win-win. Fifth habit, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Number six, synergize. Lastly, sharpen the saw. And the book will go further into detail. But as I said, I'm not going to go into detail tonight about it because it's getting late. And this is all really good. It's all really good. So please continue to come back as we will be going over more. And then this book is also gifted while well, I'm borrowing it. They may never get it back because it's so thick. I don't know how I'm going to ever finish reading this. I'm thinking of starting a book club sometime. I have no idea. But Blueprint for Black Power. Hello. This is Amos Wilson. Amos N. Wilson. This is a moral, political, and economic imperative for the 21st century. Now that doesn't scream financial independence. I don't know what does. I'm just saying. So that is that. That is that. And this one is an incredible book. I read it in one of my lives before. People seem to really like this one. So yeah, this chapter one, what is power? Force as power, coercion as power, influence as power, competent and legitimate authority as power, manipulation as power. Summary, white domination, black subordination. Mm. Chapter two. And basis of power, organization and ethic resources, power and property, organizations and institutions as power sources, organized networks and power, sources of organizational power, and then here's a good one. Social power of or un, yeah, social power of unorganized masses. And then talks about the expression of mass power. So in the context of black Americans, hello, this is a good one. Good read. Really good read. So I'm going to end it right there. And um, as far as the books and information is concerned. So um, I have a little short story about this. So I used to have my faith in crystals, right? Because I didn't really have a relationship with the most high God myself. You know, one of those things like seeking him, you know, but not knowing how to find him. Because I didn't really have access to the Holy Spirit like that. Um, so yeah, I would pray. I'd pray for my family and my loved ones more than myself. And I always ask for their protection. More so over than more so than my protection. Interesting, right? But um, as I would go out into the world and go to all these places looking for God, essentially. Looking for resources. Looking to heal myself. And eventually heal other people. I went across... I My father introduced me to more science classes. So... Um, there's this table. They would sell jewelry, organite. I love organite. Get a little closer so you can see that little sword right there. Has amethyst right there and copper because it boosts the crystal's natural energy there. So I fell in love with organ energy. And when COVID first happened, I was crazy about organ energy because it's said to neutralize, um, neutralize. What is it called? Like the the radiation. That's what it is. Neutralized radiation. So yeah. I actually believed in this to protect me from all the BS. That's like the sword is to cut through all the BS and get straight to the truth. Straight to the point. Straight to 
who has the same mindset, the same intentions of true intentions of just healing and community. So that's why I had this crystal for. Uh, that's why I had this crystal, and I found this crystal on one twenty fifth, one twenty fifth, and they no longer make these. The the couple that had that was making these never they don't make these anymore. I got a lot of DVDs from them and such, but. This had me start my own journey of creating Oregon pieces. And if I can find the pictures, I actually created quite a few Oregon pieces. And I'm interested, if you're interested, um, looking to make some more Oregon pieces because they're so beautiful. It can be paperweights, it can be, if you believe in energy, you know, um, you definitely can see that, use that as a tool. This is not to be God, you know, God, this is an idol of anything, but anyway. I no longer need crystals as my god, okay? They're just a beautiful um, reminder of where I once was. So hopefully this encourages you to, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This encourages you to have a relationship with God and not really worship just the items that he has made. Um. So anyway, thank you all again for just joining me tonight. I really appreciate you. You can continue to follow me on my YouTube and my Instagram, both at M-I-Z Dynasty. Check out my website, M-I-Z Dynasty Official.com. Sign up for the newsletter if you like to keep posted on music coming up, on events coming up, uh, giveaways, uh, raffles, um, so much more. Please, please, please. It's just me right now, so be it, bear with me. But I look forward to seeing you all again on my channels. And I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback and seeing what you want to know. Until next time, everybody. Peace. <laughs>